Uh, hello. Uh, I want to present to you um, Trenchboot, uh, which is open DRTM implementation, and not only for IMD platforms, that I, but I will focus on IMD since we're doing this part of job. So uh, my name is Piotr Krul. I'm founder and embedded system consultant at uh, 3 dev a Poland-based consulting company. I'm interested in open source firmware, platform security, trusted computing. Uh, so just uh, one small note, all the um, presentation presentation made by 3 dev had uh, associated uh, paper. So uh, if you really want to know more about that, you can read exhausting uh, paper, which will be published after, after this presentation. Okay, what we will talk about um, is a little bit of terminology, but uh, I see that most of you are familiar with, with uh, trusted computing and DRTM stuff. But we will repeat some terminology. Uh, we will see what's the difference bet between static root of trust and dynamic root of trust. Uh, and maybe a little bit about this holy war, because definitely there are two camps. Uh, despite those, those um, uh, solutions are orthogonal, to be honest. Um, then uh, I would like to show you some diagram from uh, Trusted uh, Computing Group uh, specification, uh, just to put the ground, uh, what we're talking about and, and uh, how this flow work. I will switch to our implementation, a couple of problems that we had, and then I will uh, present a demo on our, on our um, core boot platform, um, PCNG's core boot platform that we maintain for a long time. And then uh, some issues um, and what we plan to, to do further with that work. So what was the motivation? Um, so we want to implement Trenchboot. Trenchboot is a open uh, toolbox, you can say, because this is not exactly framework. There are many components to that. Uh, for AMD platforms, uh, there were a couple of questions about, um, about a platform that we maintain. Uh, so definitely it supports DRTM, but there was no software stack that can leverage that, or the software stack, stack, stack existing uh, were not usable exactly in a uh, correct, correct case. So um, yeah, so it would be great to provide um, out of the box support for uh, DRTM in all components, like in bootloader, um, in um, Linux kernel, and this is what we try to do here and we succeed. Um, and of course, we want to um, raise our uh, knowledge about uh, trusted computing and and build better hardware, more secure hardware and firmware, of course. Okay, a little bit of, of terminology. So what is root of trust? Uh, so root of trust is a component performing sec security specific uh, functions. Uh, this component can be ME, uh, can be if you trust it, can be PSP, uh, can be uh, Open BMC. I saw discussion that that uh, what if B, uh, BMC would be a root of trust. Um, uh, so um, th this is some component on on our platform typically. So uh, a root of trust meant for measure measurement um, mm, makes the initial integrity measurement of the executed code and put it in something uh, tamper resistant, which can be which, which is a uh, um, tr uh, trusted platform module, so TPM. And um, so there are other uh, terms here, like uh, core root of trust for measurement and static root of trust for measurement. Uh, so Michal explained that uh, yesterday on the, during the presentation. Uh, but, but in general, um, core or code right now, since uh, Trusted Computing Group changed the glossary from core to code, um, not sure why. Um, so uh, code root of trust for measurement is the instruction or is, is are the instructions executed by the platform uh, when, when it acts as a, as a root of trust for measurement and static root of trust for measurement uh, provide chains of measurement. So we have these uh, stages of booting and, and uh, each stage is measured and, and the measurement is in TPM. And what's the difference between the dynamic root of trust for measurement? Um, so dynamic root of trust for measurement is some platform dependent function, uh, which can be, uh, typically it is instruction on Intel and on AMD it's different. So on AMD we, ca we have SK init, on Intel we need Intel TXT and there is instruction S entry and there are a couple of functions. 
that uh, that help that uh, that help run the DRTM. And what this instruction does, uh, it provides a new instance of uh, root of trust for measurement without rebooting. So to establish static root of trust, we have to boot platform since since it, it begins from the boot, and then we at some point we have measurements which we can check. And in case of DRTM, we don't really care about those early phases because we dynamically establish this root of trust. Yeah, so um, so it establishes minimal trusted computing base, which is kind of code, which is self-defending, this self-defending code. And I will I will show you how it happened. But what's the difference between static root of trust for measurement and dynamic root of trust for measurement? So first of all, I mentioned that we need reset for static root of trust. Second, uh, there is problem um, with the PCRs, uh, since um, when we have update, we have to somehow reevaluate that. Uh, maybe um, uh, reprovision um, um, TPM if we have some secret seal it to PCRs. Um, so it's it's kind of problematic. And to be honest, I don't know about anyone who who implement that correctly in an in open way and deliver this widely. Uh, other things are that um, various specifications uh, are are closed and there are no open tools for a kind of a provisioning platform with a static root of trust. Uh, so of course, in core boot, we have vboot. Uh, but if we are talking about the uh, hardware specific mechanism like NXP uh, high, uh, hardware assured boot or Intel secure boot or boot, gu boot guard uh, or uh, AMD hardware validated boot, it is tied to close, uh, close tools, uh, which are typically available under NDA. And there are a lot of problems with them. Um, so static root of trust is well established with, with uh, major uh, independent BIOS vendors. Um, so typically, you you have platforms, UFI platforms that are shipped and and support, uh, secure boot is supported. Um, there are open implementations, as I mentioned. There is vboot and and Chromebook and PC engines use use the open open implementation. So dynamic root of trust for measurement. Uh, um, in theory, works even in compromised uh, environment. So we don't really um, care about what happens before uh, we we did this instruction that establishes a dynamic root of trust. Uh, so we don't have to re we don't have to reboot um, to to establish that. Um, we don't have um, like typically the RTM should be associated with remote uh, attestation. So, uh, so to be honest, the, some remote server should say to us if the measurements are correct or incorrect. Um, and um, it is very small, like um, the, the secure loader, which is used during the execution in case of AMD is, is 64K. So uh, it is possible to get through uh, some certification. And, and with trench boot, we have open implementation for that. So why to not, not use that? So this is picture from uh, TCG DRTM architecture specification. So what we ha uh, what we see here uh, is is platform boot flow. Uh, on the left side we have uh, platform power on. Then we getting through pre gap um, uh, stage. So in case of Intel TXT, um, this is needed because um, it uses some closed binary from Intel ACM BIOS to pre-configure environment for further um, uh, dynamic launch event. Uh, this For AMD, this is not needed. Then we either have SRTM or we don't have SRTM. Um, so we boot our firmware. And DCE uh, preamble is kind of preparation, uh, configuration, like environment uh, configuration or preparation of the environment to run dynamic launch event. Some steps are needed. Uh, typically, so we have this dynamic launch event. This is exactly our SK init or S entry uh, uh, instruction, and then we have some some code which is run. In case of Intel, we have um, ACM, which you can download from Intel website. In case of um, AMD, there was nothing uh, available, um, just out of the box. So AMD does not provide any anything, but there were various uh, commercial implementation. And with Trench Boot, we have open implementation of uh, DCE. 
Uh, and then either we have success and we have a dynamic, dynamically launch measured uh, environment. So uh, we run some kernel or some other software and we can check PCRs that everything was dynamically measured and we can check those measurements. Or we have some remediation if this didn't succeed. Okay, so uh, this dynamic launch event use PCR 70 to 17 to 22. Uh, those are initialized with minus one. Uh, and during the, the event, the execution of the instruction, um, it is uh, changed to zero and immediately extend with the hash of our uh, DCE, which can be either ACM uh, BIOS plus probably something else. I, I'm not sure, I'm, I don't understand exactly steps for Intel TXT, but for AMD, we have our uh, secure loader um, which which is uh, measured and it, it extends the PCR17, which I will show you later. So uh, I told you a little bit about the implementation. Um, so yeah, most of that I already told you. Um, so the problem with Intel TXT from my point of view, uh, it is that uh, it use closed binary uh, ACM BIOS. Uh, so up till now, I heard some rumors that, that there is there will be implementation in core boot. Uh, I know that some people in Nine Elements working on that, but but still they will not open ACM BIOS because it's impossible. Intel will not allow that. So that's kind of key problem with that implementation, in my opinion. Um, and then we have AMD, um, which is very well uh, described in software manual. You can implement a completely open source version. Of the of the ACM um, for AMD, so it's called it differently. It's called secure secure loader, but anyway. So there are some rumors that Qualcomm will uh, will have something soon. Uh, it was mentioned on Zen Summit, um, and uh, you know both both the implement all the implementations will be probably comp compatible with TCG specification. But the problem is that. Uh, each of these um, dynamic root of trust measurement implementation use different terminology. And it's like when you're reading that, uh, it's complete mess and it's hard to new, uh, to, to new beginners to understand uh, what's going on. So this is comparison of the terminology used by various uh, implementation. Um, so Trenchbot typically tries to use TCG terminology, but there are some things that are not named or we uh, taking shortcut, shortcuts. So the gap, you saw the gap is the, the stage where SRTM is running and we really don't care uh, what exactly going there um, because this is non-trusted uh, environment. Uh, then we have this dynamic launch event, which is SK init instruction in case of, um, in case of uh, trench boot, in case of MD, I'm sorry. Um, in case of trench boot, it is called as, as vendor call it. Yeah. So uh, DMA protection um, from TCG uh, specification is uh, in IMD feature called a device ex exclusion vector, which gives us ability to uh, um, protect against DMA attacks in, in specific way. So I will not read that, like you see what's, what's the difference between various implementation. Uh, probably ARM uh, has its own terminology. They also has some uh, specification related um, to DRTM. Um, yeah, so we, we as we are part of the transport community, so we're also trying to clean it up, and hopefully after some time we will have common language to talk about that. Okay, so in case of um, problems we had, um, so typically. Um, we want to protect ourselves against uh, two issues. So those are mentioned in uh, trusted computing uh, specification. This is DMA and uh, SMM. Um, so we have to be we have to ensure that uh, code cannot be changed uh, by anything outside of our uh, trusted computing base so from our small piece of code. Uh, but uh, but various things may happen. So typically, in uh, typically we have something like we start our DCE, um, we measure, we extend uh, PCRs, and execute component, and we follow that with with all the components. But 
it may happen uh, some corner case situation where we uh, measured and extend the the component but when we try to execute some something like dma or smm uh caused that the uh that that there was execution of some road component and to be honest we not despite we have correct measurement and correct uh, extension of the pcrs we're running some some road component um because of the man manipulation through dma or smm and in in that way of course uh drtm will not work and uh, and this cause problems because of that we have to protect ourselves uh, about uh, dma attacks so who's who's who understand dma attacks who knows how it works like probably everyone so it's like i mentioned that uh, last year on presentation uh, so i will not repeat repeat myself there are in general two mechanism uh, two gen general groups of mechanism to protect yourself against dma attacks it's ex exclusion and trans translation um so vtd typically implements exclusion um it uses something called dma protected ranges um and uh, protected memory regions of course like you have to read vtd to understand how to configure that uh, amd uses uh, device inclusion uh, exclusion vector which we in our opinion uh, is a little bit better since we can uh, we have continuous array of bits and we can slice it uh, um, uh, size memory for in four kilobytes and say what kind of um, and pro what kind of protection we have. So these four kilobytes is uh, not the random number. I believe it's because of the PCI uh, config space. Um, so like I believe this is related with PCI. Uh, and the translation mechanism is used when we have IOMMU or or uh, VTD uh, DMA remapping. Um, it's more complicated. You have to configure IOMMU correctly. Uh, you have to um, take care of um, specifics of the IOMMU hardware. Um, and typically, DRTM use, use exclusion, um, at least in the implementation that we saw so far. Uh, SMM. So this is a quote from uh, DRTM specification. So you can see that. Uh, the DCE, DCE, so dynamic con configured uh, environment, uh, shall consider SMM to be correct by construction, whatever that means. Uh, the SSM, SMM implementation shall successfully maintain its code and data integrity indefinitely. So, yeah, so the assumption is that um, when we're getting uh, some SMM code, it's correctly developed and correctly shipped by, uh, shipped by BIOS vendor. And to be honest, we have very little to protect ourselves. Um, I believe Eugene STM can help us with, uh, with that. Um, but the question is how we can um, connect that with the DRTM implementation and what, you know, how much, many resources we will need to, to connect those two things. So uh, SMM, in our opinion, is one of the most problematic areas. Um, so IBVs should ensure that uh, um, all the handlers um, are correctly uh, are safe and correctly implemented. But you know, like we saw that we cannot rely on that. And there were problems already with uh, with SMM. Um, so typically, after setting everything up, uh, we locking SMM. There is no way to validate uh, SMM code after this this locking. So. Um, Despite um, if we have open source firmware, we can investigate and we can check um, those uh, SMM. Uh, and even if we use SRTM, we can even measure uh, that. Um, and in in DRTM, we can even verify th those measurements if those are those are fine. Uh, but uh, still, we have situation uh, that ring zero can change SMRAM, and we of course have correct measurement. But after that, someone changed it what we're executing, so um, this doesn't help. Yeah, so as I said, like the only option is SMI transfer monitor, uh, but the, the question is how to implement that for AMD. Uh, I believe right now it's completely out of scope. The AMD uh, um, programmers manual is saying something about that, how there are some guides how to implement that, but still this have to be uh, considered and 
we have to think how to do that. So I just mentioned a couple uh, implementation of the DRTM that were even commercially uh, successful. Um, so first of all, like first Oslo was just uh, just the research stuff. Flickr and Softcard were uh, part of the commercial products, um, but they didn't uh, go into the open, so everyone can use that. So because of that, uh, Trenchboot was created to provide uh, open implementation for uh, for the RTM. Um, also, there was a, a GE implementation that they tried to integrate with Tboot. Um, Tboot is is uh, um, is a software that uses Intel TXT, um, and of course, this was out of the agenda because this is AMD, and Tboot didn't consider to merging any AMD uh, code. Okay, so our implementation. So our implementation, uh, if we compare that to the picture from uh, TCG specification, looks like that. So we have platform uh, reset, uh, then we have uh, our core boot, uh, uh, then we have grab as a as a payload. The, everything is all that stuff is is in SPI. Uh, then we have in grab we have um, S launch module. Uh, this is extension to grab. And we invoke uh, SK init instruction. Um, we have this uh, secure loader, which is called uh, landing zone in Trenchboot. And it can um, run uh, Linux kernel, measure the Linux kernel, uh, what I will present you in a second. So how it look, uh, this, this is piece of uh, code from uh, grab config. So we typically have some part, uh, path to Linux kernel, and then we Climbing uh, that we want to use SKE. There is alternative also for uh, for Intel version, like uh, people from Oracle developing Intel version, um, and and of apparatus consulting. Um, so, and then we have S launch. This is our um, secure loader, which we take from the spy flash. Um, this is indicated by this CBFS disk, and then we boot. Uh, the difference is that the um, that the boot command is not exactly boot command that we typically run in grab. It is modified because we run those two previous uh, things like s launch sk init s and s launch module. It changed the memory layout in a way that when we booting we 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 executing sk init and and running a landing zone, not the kernel. Because in normal case the boot will cause jump to the kernel and we just put Linux. Uh, and in that case, we want a little bit different flow. Okay, let's let's show a little demo. Um, so I have my uh, PC engines board. Uh, there is a TPM module here. Um, to be honest, the disk is not needed. Everything is in spy flash. So let's boot. Yeah. So. Just to show that the uh, that the config contain uh, things that I told you. So oh, there are some debugging stuff here, uh, but we have um, so CBFS means that this is in spy. So we're loading this uh, uh, kernel with those parameters. Uh, we have some init, uh, init RD also here to to be able to have some user space, and uh, we just. Um, Executing S launch SK init, S launch module, CBFX LZ header. So this is landing zone, this is trench boot, to be honest. Um, of course, this was already executed. So I don't have to kind of source that file second time when I just boot. And I can. Uh, And you can see that uh, the PCR 17 and PCR 18 uh, was extended. Uh, I would like you to remember that value, uh, the PCR 18. Uh, the PCR, like maybe not whole, like at least a couple, couple of signs. <laughs> if you can hold, like I have no problem with that. So uh, you, you should get a beer in if you can remember whole. 
So uh, th 13 AD, let's say, uh, the, the, um, the 17 contain uh, our landing zone measurement and 18 contain uh, a command line. So, so if we change, uh, if we change command line, we should be able to modify the PCR 18. So let's say our attacker changed the command line to uh, to get some advantage. So I have to type that. And let's say I will leave the early print K. I will not add this early print K. Uh, and I need enter D to, to be loaded again. Uh, since the uh, since the memory layout is the same, like nothing changed, I, I will not rerun the S launch SK init and less uh, S launch module since everything should be set up. I, I'm just booting. Yeah, so you can see that uh, the PCR 18 changed since we have 13 AD here. Uh, so that means that change in command line caused change in measurement, uh, what means that uh, our secure loader really do the measurement. Uh, of course, it's very hard to prove that we really run SKE need. You just have to trust me or read the code. Uh, um, so I, I don't know how, how in other way I can, you know, provide that information. There is this log like invoke SK init. Uh, it is, it is from, from the, um, grab module. And then we have some logs from, from inside the, um, landing zone or our secure loader, which these are just the booking information that we extend in PCRs and so on. Okay, so that's it uh, from the demo. Okay, so what we plan to, to do with that? So you can saw, uh, you saw that I just show you the SHA-1 um, uh, PCRs. Uh, so we want to also have a code that uh, do SHA-256, uh, um, but you know, like for, for now we, we just don't have that code and using TPM for that would have been a little bit problematic and slow since we have to slice everything in one kilobytes and feed the TPM with that, this would be slow operation. And, and for now we're not doing that. Uh, so either uh, SHA-256 have to be implemented somehow in a uh, secure loader or I don't know, like, uh, or we have to live with SHA-1, which is not, not cool. Uh, the SMM and SMI problem have to be addressed. Um, like th this implementation is better than we than what we have before because because before there was nothing, so right now we have like some remaining small problems um, with uh, with SMI, and yeah, so it's uh, right now uh, the the only mit reasonable mitigation probably would be to use SR uh, SRTM uh, and just measure everything uh, and make sure that the firmware didn't change. Um, so this is the way we can check that SMIs were not modified. We're not measuring ACPI tables, and we should. And uh, DRTM specifications say clearly that uh, that we should do that. There is even special DRTM resource table, um, uh, which should be created. Um, there should be a consideration about supporting different OS and, and hypervisors. I hope to have presentation on platform security I summit mean, 2019. Uh, where where we will show um, Zen running, but you know I don't know if this will succeed. I have not too much time for that. Um, there is also idea to have uh, IPXI and CBIOS uh, working with the RTM. IPXI would be very cool, I would say, since in that way, for example, we can um, we can uh, attest if um, if things boot, booted from server are correct. Uh, yeah, and uh, and there is of course a uh, need for building a custom kernel 
for and custom uh, root FS. Uh, and it would be great if you can use Yocto to, to build like a small um, kernel and root FS that can support uh, various tools for embedded applications and use, of course, DRT. So where, where to go, uh, go from here? Uh, we're working on putting every all patches into the trench boot GitHub account. Um, there is a, a Google Groups uh, um, trench boot devil. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is like probably clicking join and then uh, Daniel Smith uh, see some notification about that, then he can approve. Um, yeah, you can try this code. Like, feel f like the the main thing right now is trying that on different AMD platform that we did. Um, we use quite quite old one. So um, yeah, so this is Puma uh, SOC. So it would be great to check if uh, there will be any problems to use that code for newer AMD platforms. And yeah, and we are open for discussion. And if you have any uh, comments, questions. Uh, feel free to ask. Everything is clear. Obvious stuff. I don't know why we didn't complete that before. It's sooner. Um, there was one thing that bothers me in the future improvements. Uh, you have stated a support for CBIOS. Yeah. Um, could you explain shortly how would you uh, implement that? How do uh, CBIOS? Yeah, so so the, the CBIOS would be like like Grub uh, in our case. So it's like the, how I will implement that. Uh, so this is not uh, so CBIOS uh, can read from CBFS, so it can get uh, a secure loader, and it can get other other at kernel and other things. And then it can invoke some assembly to, to invoke SK init to jump to this uh, dynamically uh, launch measured environment. So, so it will, will be cool if, if CBIOS sub also supports that, not only Grab. I think that would be the way. Okay. All right, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.